The UK is known for its beautiful countrysides and its heritage. But one of the aspects of British heritage that we may not know as well about is its Islamic heritage. In these sessions, I'll be talking a little bit about our heritage and the seeds of our community that were planted a lot longer than we may realize. So in this session, we're going to talk a little bit about the first English Quran. Now, when we think about the first English Quran, we may think about Muhammad Marmaduke Pictou's Quran, which was published in 1930. And that was called the meanings of the glorious Quran. Some of us may be aware of a Quran that appeared even earlier than that. In fact, two centuries earlier in 1734 by George Sale, and that was simply entitled the Quran. The first English translation, however, came a lot earlier than that, almost a century earlier than that. And that was in 1649, and it was a translation written by Alexander Ross. He translated it not directly from the Arabic, but from a French translation that appeared in 1647. But nonetheless, it was a very popular translation throughout the 17th century and it became the first English translation of the Qur'an to appear in the United States. Now, what might have caused Alexander Ross to decide to translate the Qur'an in this early period? Well, to understand that, we need to understand a little bit about England's history. The mid-17th century saw England rocked with the English Civil War. Now, this was a series of battles that pitted the monarchy against its opponents in Ireland, Scotland and England. In England, it pitted Charles I and his descendant Charles II against the parliamentarians. And in January 1649, the parliamentarians executed Charles I. Now, this was a huge event. And merely four months after this execution, the Alexander Ross Quran appeared. So why did Ross decide to publish this now? Well, to understand that, we need to understand who Ross was. Alexander Ross was the chaplain to Charles I. And so when he published the Quran, he was looking towards the Islamic faith to rationalize the English Civil War and to criticize the parliamentarians who he saw as sinful for executing their king. So in the introductory material of the translation, Ross refers to um, the parliamentarians, accusing them of instability in religion. But then he goes on to write an admiring passage about the Muslims and their practice. Indeed, if Christians will but diligently read and observe the laws and histories of the Mahometans, they may blush to see how zealous they are in the works of devotion, piety and charity, how devout, cleanly and reverend in their mosques, how obedient to their priests, that even the great Turk himself will attempt nothing without consulting his mufti. How careful are they to observe their hours of prayers five times a day, where, wherever they are or however employed. How constantly do they observe their fasts, morning till night, a whole month together. How loving and charitable the Muslims are to each other and how careful of strangers may be seen in their hospitals, both for the poor and the traveler. If we observe their justice, temperance and other virtues, we may truly blush at our coldness, both in devotion and charity, at our injustice, intemperance and oppression Doubtless these men will rise up in judgment against us and surely their devotion, piety and works of mercy are main causes for the growth of Mahometism. And on the contrary, our neglect of religion and looseness of conversation is a main hindrance for the increase of Christianity. Is it not a shame that they should read their Al-Quran once every month and we scarce read over the Bible in all our life? So in this moment of national crisis, Ross turned to the Quran and to the practice of the Muslim community to rationalize what was going on, criticize the parliamentarians who he saw as heretical and admire the Muslims who he saw as exemplary. So the Quran then became not only a text for the Muslims and the Islamic faith, but it became a central text of the, of the English Civil War and a key part of English heritage. So in that sense, Ross displays an admiration for this faith and brought it into English culture, into English history at this pivotal moment of this country's heritage. Next time we'll be talking about how that interest and that fascination for Islam emerged in England and it precedes the Quran.